Welcome back, welcome back. This is Jeremiah, he is on fire. Many of you are going to be surprised at this 30, oh, 34, this should be 34, I might re-enumerate it. This is 15.34, this is Science 2022, and we're looking at heaven and earth, and we're looking at science fact or fiction. Science fact or science fiction, we're looking at terrestrial and celestial physics that are in the Bible. Now many of you are, are, might be surprised uh, at, at what you've seen here because most Americans and most people uh, who, who have been in the 2000 year period of Christ Church, they have not looked at what the Bible talks about pertaining to science. And I've just given you an ironclad, uh, irrefutable, unassailable approach at the, 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 the celestial and terrestrial physics in your Bible. And, and I have just went over a, a thousand things. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but I just went over quite a few items here that many of you are going to say, wow, and you're going to enjoy, okay? And of course, and I'm giving you Bible science facts that will never, that, that'll never go away. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So this is all permanent. When the Bible says that he, that he founded, you know, the, the, uh, the heaven in the waters, that's what it meant. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, we, we just went over that. He founded, you know, the heavens in the waters. You know, the, the heaven is in the heavens. And, and this is not that hard to figure out. And all of it, we're going to let go. It's time to get into some uh, earth physics right now, uh, physical um, uh, earth science. And that's what this board is here for you right now. Because we're wrapping up heaven and earth, uh, and uh, this is science fact or fiction, 2022, and here's the deal. Uh, I'll probably have those astro astrology lessons there for you soon, and, and you should have them there. You can just go ahead and click on. That'll be a, a, a central or integral part of this uh, category and this playlist okay that's it jeremiah is here and we greet you in the only name given amongst men by which you must be saved and we're just rejoicing together with you in the lord and again i say rejoice and we have one faith one lord and one baptism and we're ready to roll here uh, as you can see by this uh, board here i'm going to explain to you why when the Bible says that the earth will not be moved, and we just looked at uh, Zechariah 1.11, and we might want to go there as one of our key scriptures, to, just to remind you, some of you are not familiar, I'm very familiar with uh, all of these scriptures, uh, and I've been uh, uh, musing over all these scriptures for years now, so it's not, you know, it's something that, uh, that I am familiar with, and, and, you, and, and I have to remember that you... Some of these major scriptures that you don't uh, know, I'm here to familiarize you with those scriptures. And Zechariah, of course, is uh, right at the end of your, your Old Testament. And let's look at Zechariah, which means the Lord remembers in Hebrew. Zechariah. And uh, let's move into Zechariah 111. Let's go to 110. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord hath sent to walk to and fro through the earth. So what we have is we have angels that God is sending to walk around his property. Now when I was in school, they did not emphasize this basic fact that everything actually belongs to the Lord. Okay. I, I, they, they have a lot of things, uh, you know, in school, uh, you know, this, this is, we don't know where this came from. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, uh, let, let's stop the train. Uh, everything belongs to the Lord. And, uh, and what a wonderful uh, life it is to, to never be introduced to these confusing uh, introductions, you know, of ideas and so forth. And, and Science 2022 is Jeremiah here to show you what heaven and earth are like, okay? And, uh, and uh, here we have someone, it's the Lord is sending, rather, the angels to walk to and fro, to and fro throughout the earth, okay? And here's their report. It's, the Lord doesn't really need a report. He, he, the, the Lord likes to do things uh, 
We'll, 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 we'll talk to him about that later. <laughs> so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So the Lord answered. And uh, verse 11. We have walked. No, it's, it, it, yeah. It's actually the same verse. I, I, I okay. mentioned I mentioned 10, but I wanted to, uh, 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 it's two verses. And, and I'm getting a little confused here. 10 is when the Lord is sending them out. 11 is the report. So let's go. And they answered, the angel, the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees, which is probably the Lord, but we, it could be an angel. And said, we have walked to and fro through the earth. And behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. So I don't know if you know what sitteth still means. It sitteth still and is at rest. Now, this is very consistent with what we've already went over in, yeah. in, in, the, in the lessons. So. Refresher. So let's listen and let's go. So we've already went through heaven and earth and we've looked at how the earth is on pillars and it's sitting, it's sitting still here. Uh, the Bible is very consistent. It will not be moved. It, it, it rests on nothing and the Lord holds it up. And so what we come away with is we have a platform, we have a plate, and it's not moving. And it's quite clear in your Bible, from Genesis to the book of Revelation, that there is no movement, there is no circle, there is no bending, and, and whatever. And, and, and let me add something else before we move on. I've been an artist most of my life, and you, my listeners, let me share something with you. That we are here to keep things simple here, and not overcomplicate things. When I look at artwork uh, for... for, for uh, when, when, when somebody paints a, a seascape that has 70 miles left and right, yeah. there is no bend. No. And, and, and when I, when I uh, uh, one moment. So we have here in this particular graph, uh, graphic here, this illustration, we have a model of what people say the earth is. And what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to show you the fallacy of gravity and earth movement. I'm going to show you how it is impossible. Not, not just with the scriptures, but just what you see with your own eyes, okay? And let's get going. When I, when I was an, an artist, I, and I have a movie where the gentleman says, they, they used to say the earth was flat, and behind him is a painting. And the painting is a seascape. And the seascape must be at least 50 miles wide. When you go to the ocean, you're looking at about 50 miles left and right. That's the span of your eyes. That's as far as you can see from your, from your perspective, right? So you're looking at about 50 miles, 70, who knows, depending upon the view you have. And the ocean is completely flat. In the painting that's right behind his head. So what he declared... What contra what he declared contradicted what he saw, what we saw. I have movies that, that, that have the, the earth uh, uh, with, with different shapes. And, 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 and I have a movie, uh, The Guns of Navarone, that one minute the earth is a U, and the, the, and the next minute the, the ocean is an N, which means they're using curved lenses and, and it's, they're not being honest, or, or they're just enjoying... Uh, using a curved lens. It, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just not the truth. That's the point. And uh, the Bible is the truth. And uh, a, a couple of inches every mile is what, is what Wikipedia says. Wikipedia says that there's a couple of inches curve every mile. Well, and then they said recently online that the people who purport these things, the higher you go, the more bend you see. Now, since I've been to, to hilltops and near mountain level, I looked at the ocean. I'm here to tell you that this is not true at all. 
that the Bible is true and every man, let every man be a liar, essentially. That's, that's what this is. And in other words, God is true and don't, and don't wrestle with the truth and submit to reality. And that's what this heaven and earth lesson is about, is, is that I've already gone over most of the criteria to bring you to where we are. I'm not going to review everything that we went over, because we went over at least uh, 50 scriptures here, 40. I lost track uh, of all the scriptures here that are here for you, and, and terrestrial and celestial physics, to show you that the Bible means what it says. And, and it's not that complicated. Uh, we, we talked about uh, Job, talking, uh, talking about that the... The dome that's above your head is strong glass. He calls the sky strong glass or a firmament. It's another word for a tent, an astrodome, uh, um, uh, whatever you call it. The, the Bible calls it basically a covering, and it's a covering for the sun and the moon, which means the yeah. sun, which means the sun and the moon are over the covering. So all of this is very simple, and what I'm going to show you now is, we're going to, we're going to let that go. Uh, I've hammered that home, but what I'm going to show you now is earth physics, and look at some geometry here, and, and talk a little bit about how we, we can look at a line, and, and we can see that, that the plumb line doesn't exist. And, and let's talk about that. So we, we have, we have uh, true science, which tells you that Barometric pressure is the only pressure that things have. There is no other pull. There is no other nothing. And we, we can see that by the, when I showed you the different levels that everything takes in water. Everything takes a level in water or liquid based upon the weight of the object. And I showed you five, four or five, what was it, about six levels there. Oil goes here, Balls, uh, you know, stuff go, uh, you know, uh, marbles go here, and that's the way everything is in oxygen too. Okay, so, uh, and I'm going to illustrate that for you with these boards. All right. Okay. So true science, barometric pressure alone, and the fallacy of gravity and movement. There is no gravity, and there is no movement. Now. Uh, let, let, let's look at the board here. Now, if you look at the board here, you look on, on the left at the, at the bottom there. I want to give you an example of, uh, of, a, of a hot air balloon and a helicopter and why the Earth cannot be moving 400 yards a second. Okay? Well, I'm going to prove this to you. And it's, you can't argue with that. I'm going to give you a couple of examples and then we're going to move on to the next board. Now, in this illustration, I have a hot air balloon and a helicopter. Now, in order for the hot air balloon to leave the ground and to get to its destination, say it wants to stay in one place. I used to go to the racetrack in San Diego, Del Mar Racetrack, and they had a fair there. So while the races were going, you could, you could party and have fun, and, and San Diego, Del Mar area is God's country, okay? You can't find better, you can't find a better climate than San Diego, North San Diego. Just forget about it. You, you, you can have that, you can have that fair year round. It's an amazing place, but let's, let's get back to the idea germane here, which is, how did that, how did that balloon get to, oh, let's say a hundred yards away from its takeoff? Because now it's sitting in the air, stable, for eight races at, at the racetrack. The balloon will stay there for all eight races or four or five before they come back down and, of course, uh, come back to their original spot there in San Diego, which is the, the fair there. It's not just a racetrack. It's like a big party place, rich people, balloons, whatever. Now, let me explain something to you. How did that balloon get to where it is? It's free to get there. That's the point. It was not stuck anywhere. Otherwise, it could not get to the place it resided in the, in the air. Because that's what, that's what those balloons did. They went to a particular place uh, above the racetrack there, near the racetrack. Not above the racetrack, but near the racetrack. You, you can see the balloons. 
and they were there for quite a few races. Now, if the Earth is moving 400 yards a second, could that balloon be stationary where it is? Or would, the, or would that balloon be in Hawaii in a few minutes? Because the Earth is moving 400 yards a second, and it's moving east. Which, which means the balloon would be in Hawaii in a few minutes at 400 yards a second. And some people have said there's a plumb line that, that, that the balloon is stuck. Well, wait a minute. How did the balloon get to where it was if it's stuck? That means it's not stuck. You, you, can't, have it, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You, you can't have it both ways. You, you can't have the balloon flying, uh, going to some place where it wants to go freely. And it's obviously uh, freely moving. Okay, you, you can't argue with that. I've had people tell me that, that, that they, they want to argue the fact that the balloon is free in the first place, which is, it's absurd. It's not biblical. The balloon is not stuck anywhere. It's free to go left, right, and what they do is they release hot air with a flame, and, 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 and it causes the balloon to rise. The hot air. In the big giant canvas, and they're usually painted pretty colors and so forth, uh, would you like to fly in my balloon? Okay, well listen, it, it is absolutely, it is, it is physics 101 to come to the conclusion that that, that that balloon is free, and if the earth is moving 400 yards a second, that you would not see that balloon uh, in the fourth race. That's, that's absolutely absurd. If the earth is moving 400 yards a second. Also, a helicopter. Let, let, let's look at a helicopter. A helicopter leaves a building. They're usually on top of uh, uh, buildings, correct? Or they could be on the ground, and, and, the, and it takes off of a 10-story of a building. Now, is that, is that helicopter free to go left, right, up and down, yes or no? It's obviously free to go where it wants to go. Now, is there barometric pressure on the balloon and the helicopter? Yes, there is. But it can't be too much pressure because the, uh, the man who, who's drawing, who flying the helicopter has the joystick and he can go anywhere he wants to go. No. So therefore, how did he ever get stuck anywhere? I've had people tell me that my science or the biblical science is not true. And I'm here to tell you that they don't even know physics 101. Why? Because the helicopter is always free. So is a bird. They're never trapped. People have told me that they're trapped in some sort of region based upon gravity or atmospheric pressure so that when the earth moves, they must move. That means that for five races at the racetrack, that balloon is trapped and can't go left or right. That's simple, simple logic. You can't argue with that. So that means that while we're moving 400 yards a second at the racetrack, the balloon is also moving 400 yards a second. Well, then how does it go back to its original place? If it's stuck, so the whole point is that this is very simple science. Um, the copter and the, and the balloon are free to swing anywhere they want to swing. And, and, and they've never been trapped by any earth force. It's just simple logic. The, 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 the simple science is, is that the copter and the balloon are free to go anywhere they want to go, and, and these flying objects are, are, uh, are, are not in some sort of state of lockage of any kind. The Bible is true, and, and, and men are confused. Oh, it's very popular that people are confused. What does that mean? If everyone, if everyone jumps off the, the, the bridge, so to speak, are we going to do things that don't make sense? Well, that's why it's so wonderful to be a born-again Christian, uh, raised in a Christian family, where the Lord is going to show you everything that's true. And, and I've, I've spent uh, hours studying science, and I'm here to tell you that, that it's something, something that you kind of learn, and you kind of leave it alone. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you're learning all this science, and you know it, and, and it becomes kind of old hat. And when people tell me, ooh, the earth is spinning, or I, I turn the news on, they have, a, they have the earth in a curve, you know, and, 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 it, and we're supposed to believe that all of these cameras are, are, are true to the science that, that we're looking at. 
as I just gave you an example, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a classic movie collector. Uh, for, for those of you who are following this ministry, I'll share that with you. I'm a classic movie collector. I must have 700, 800 classic movies. I lost count. Now, from 1930 to 1950, what was the ocean when you looked at it? Always flat. You could get a camera and go left to right. You could see you could see a hundred yards in a couple of my movies. A hundred miles, pardon me. You could see a hundred miles left and right when the camera swayed in the hemisphere and it went it went left and right on the movie uh, Bridges of Toko Re. The, the camera goes to, on the uh, on the battleship. It goes all the way left and it goes all the way right, and you can see the horizon of the seascape. And guess what? Was there a curve? Yes or no? There is no curve. Because the Bible's true. Now what happened in 1950? I, 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 got, I bought the movie, Guns of Navarone. What did they show you in the movie? One, movie one, one minute we see the ocean, it's a big giant U. The next minute we see the movie, it's an N shape. Okay, what is that telling you? That they're bending, they're, they're giving you a curved lens. Yeah. Now, What are, we, what are we here to do? We're, we're here to simply rejoice in the Lord. We, we, we don't, we're not here for science without love. You know, we're not here for, I want to be smart or anything. We're, no, no. We're, we're here to just simply observe God's creation and give glory to God. And a lot of people uh, have, have really gotten upset with me and, and because I'm a Quaker and I belong hanging around Quakers. That's the point. People who hear the truth and they don't argue. Because usually people who argue with this, they'll argue with something else in the Bible. I have given you an unassailable presentation as to Genesis. God created the heaven and the earth, and there is nothing else, period. If you try to insert something else out of space, planets, whatever, you know what you're talking about. There is no such thing as a planet. Planets are wandering stars. I showed you that, and they wander where? In the Astrodome. Okay, that's what facts are. And somebody showed you a picture over and over again that may not be the truth. You don't, Do you have to believe what you see on television? Do, is there a scripture, thou shalt watch television? Thou shalt believe NASA or other organizations? Well, I'm here to tell you that as a, as a, as a man who was born a Quaker, essentially, in a Christian family, whatever the Bible says, end of conversation. And that's what we're doing here. That's all. And, and I'm, I'm very relaxed here, um, in spite of the fact that I've run into a lot of harassment, uh, hostility. Uh, how, how can you argue with this? Let's continue. We're almost done with, uh, this should be 34. So the freedom that was demanded for takeoff must be experienced yeah. throughout the entire life of the flying object. Even to the point, if you jumped up in the air, you probably wouldn't land in the same place that you jumped. When I was in high school, the teacher told me, we're moving 1,070 miles per hour. I said, that's about 400 yards a second. That's, that's four football fields every second. That means if I jump in the air, uh, wait a minute, I shouldn't land in the same place. So I went home and I jumped and, and I landed in the same place, which means... <sighs> That's science. So this is heaven and earth. I'm giving you earth physics and, 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 uh, and basic geography here. And when I went to the racetrack, and after five races, the balloon was still there. That should tell you that it's an absolutely impossible for there to be any movement of the earth in any circular 400 yards a second. That just doesn't make any sense. And, and uh, this is a wonderful closing of heaven and earth. Science, fact, or fiction for you. And, uh, and we're, we're, I'm just about done here. I have a couple more boards here. I'm going to take a break and come right back to you. And, uh, and we're going to wrap this up, okay? And it, uh, this is all self-explanatory. Some of you might want some more explanations or some more, uh, fit, you know, some more um, data. But I'm just going to give you this quick snap, crackle, pop. That for somebody to tell me that that balloon was stuck, one gentleman online here, I was talking with him uh, on the chat chat room, uh, a science chat room and so forth. And he, told me that, he told me that the balloon was stuck. Because you know what? That's the only thing he can say. Really? 
we, he has to say it's a plumb line and the thing is stuck. But then it, it's contra it, it's impossible to be stuck because in order to get there, it wasn't stuck. So how they, how they, how they wasn't stuck before, and that goes for a helicopter. A helicopter will go over a fire on the eyewitness news team, and that helicopter will stay there for uh, eons. It'll stay there forever. Half an hour. I hear, this is so-and-so in Copter 4. I'm over the fire. We've been here for 20 minutes. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that that helicopter was free to get to where it is? And now it's stuck. Or you're telling me that it wasn't free. There's only, there's only, there's only a few ways to look at this from a Christian biblical perspective and how we look at things who we who study our grammar and we and we go by what the Bible says. If the Lord says the earth will not be moved, it, it won't be moved. We just looked at Zechariah here. It, it's it's still still means still. Uh, I had I had a Bible teacher here recently tell me that oh Jeremiah, it didn't mean the earth is still. It means that people are still. No, there is nothing. There, there's no reference here to people at all. We walk through the earth. All the earth sits still. That's the report. There's no people here. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, 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 no, whatever, whatever the Bible says, bank on it, as they say in America. Since America loves money so much, too much, or, 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 or material things, that's why everything is always the bank all the time. We, we, we're living in a fallen society. Yes. Now, let's look at our next board. We're to stop right here. We'll be right back, okay? We're just about done with heaven and earth. Um, I, I, for those of you who are interested, uh, I have a lot more um, on the uh, Jeremiah Michael Pearson uh, channel on YouTube. And as I mentioned before, I will be loading up on Odyssey uh, probably pretty soon. So depending upon what time frame you're in, uh, I'm thinking a time frame, you might be watching this video at the end of, of 2022. And all of those videos should be up there on, on Odyssey. And, and I'll have a couple of hundred uh, here at Jeremiah Michael Pearson 2022. Okay? On YouTube. Very simple. Got it? We're going to take a break right now, and we'll come back to the new board. And this is very easy. <laughs> you, you, you can always, uh, you, you can take your time and look at all of this and, uh, and enjoy looking at basic, simple uh, um Grammar and basic, simple logic pertaining to reasonable conclusions as to as to why the Bible says something, it means what it says. Okay. Shalom and Maranatha, and and remember, we're we're here to rejoice in the Lord always, and to and to always put into remembrance, as Paul says, that we have the fervent love of Jesus Christ, and we're anticipating the coming of the Lord at all times. Now, uh, this is the end of six thousand years of creation. And we're, we're headed for Daniel's 69th to 70th week. And, and that's what we're rejoicing in, our chief crown of rejoicing. The thing that we're happiest, Paul said, the thing that we're happiest about the most, or we're happy about the most. A little better a syntax there. We're, we're, we're very happy, and that's our top joy right now, is to be with the one that loves you and the one who uh, who is is re willing to and ready to embrace you and, and willing to do just about anything for you. And uh, I had good parents, so I basically know what, how, how God is. I already know uh, that, that for God so loved the world. And what we're, we're, and what we're doing right now, we're studying God's creation and, he, and he's giving us time and energy to rejoice in his workmanship. And, and we went through all the steps here, and uh, you know, from from the top of heaven to settled on the waters to all the way through to to he garnished the glass, he garnished the firmament. That means he painted it or he beautified it, and he beautified it with stars. Okay, everything is all simple here. I'll be right back, and we're waiting in anticipation because he loves those. He's coming for those who love his appearing. I was talking with some people the other day. They, they, they don't think about the, the, the appearing of the Lord. And that shows you how far America has gone down. I just looked at the, the apostasy and the falling away in the Greek. I'm not going to go into that right now, but uh, 
the falling away is very, very serious. It means a lot of people are going to get away from the basics and get away from loving the Lord and understanding scriptures. That's, that's what the falling away means. That's what Paul means. Now, we're going to stop right here. And we're not, we're, we're not of those, as Paul said, who shrink back to perdition. We're going to stay right here on the road. <laughs> we're, 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 we're not participating in anybody's apostasy over here or falling away and, and, and into destruction. What the Greek word means. Here. We won't go into that. I'm shutting down, and we're rejoicing in the coming of the Lord, and we're rejoicing and learning right now, too. The, the disciples were rejoicing, having power over the enemy, and we have we rejoice in that power, although it fluctuates. Well, right? One minute you have power, and you're and, and you're doing the Lord's work, and the next minute you're you're, you're being crushed somewhat by the enemy uh, in some sort of persecution, etc. Christianity is what it's, it gets a little complicated, doesn't it? We're out of high school now, many of you. Uh, this is for all ages, basic, basically, but a lot of this is for people who are getting up in age, okay? Who study their dictionary, the old Webster's Dictionary, right? All right, Jeremiah's going to shut down. I'll be right back. Shalom and Maranatha.